on the show tonight, collecting their son's PSLE results. A bittersweet day for the parents of Raphael Lee, a boy who died from cancer 12 days ago. Singapore extending its stretch of zero COVID-19 cases in the community. But one expert tells us the real milestone is still many days away. And can you guess where these shrimps come from? Singapore's diversifying its supply chains to improve food security. This is The Straits Times News Night. I'm Dylan Ang. We begin with Singapore's COVID-19 situation. For the 15th day in a row, there are zero new locally transmitted cases. However, seven new imported patients were confirmed today, all of whom were placed on stay-home notices when they arrived here. Now, having crossed the two-week mark with no community or migrant worker cases, Dr. Leong Ho Nam explains the significance of this milestone. 14 days is very important. I'll just remind the viewers here, incubation period is up to 14 days. If you have 14 days, no infection, one significant milestone. But most people actually like more than one milestone. We like to have two incubation periods as the real milestone. Two incubation periods because the first 14 days is for the disease to show up and then for the next 14 days is for the disease to transmit and pass on to other people. If we are out of it for two cycles, 28 days, this would be a great achievement for Singapore. So what happens now? Will cases stay at zero? Well, Dr. Leong says people coming to Singapore still pose a high risk. This could be the locals that are returning or other workers who are coming into Singapore or even travellers. So these will be the greatest risk to us and our greatest risk will be inability to screen them or they present very atypically at the 14th day mark of presentation uh, of coming into Singapore. So these are our greatest risks. If we can control very clearly the people who come in through to Singapore, then we have really no risk of getting another COVID-19, no risk of getting another active cluster in Singapore. Well, let's hope cases stay at zero and Singapore will move into phase three, perhaps before the end of the year. Now, in a sign of the economy reopening further, Singapore is playing host to Travel Revive, the first international trade show to be held physically in Asia Pacific since the pandemic began. Over 1,000 attendees, including 65 foreign delegates, are expected to attend in person. Safety measures such as plexiglass panels will enable face-to-face -face discussions to be held safely. For the fifth consecutive year, 98.4% of primary six pupils did well enough to progress to secondary school. 39,995 students received their PSLE results today. About two-thirds, or 66.3%, are eligible for the express course, while 21.2% are eligible for the normal academic course. Another 11% are eligible for the normal technical course. Students will be able to access the online system to submit their secondary school choices from now to next Tuesday, with posting results to be released on December 22nd. Sadly for one student, the PSLE results came too late. Raphael Lee died on November 13th, having lost his battle with bone cancer. Today, his parents, Mr. William Lee and Mrs. Winnie Lee, collected his results from Alexandra Primary School on his behalf. Mrs Lee said they tried to talk their only child, who underwent operations in April and May, out of doing his PSLE. But Raphael was absolutely determined to take the exams. This story has touched the hearts of many of our readers. You can read more about Raphael on our website, straightstimes.com. In an effort to reduce, reuse and recycle, retailer Watsons will soon start implementing a charge on plastic bags. Come December 1st, shoppers will be charged 10 cents for each transaction if they request for plastic bags on Tuesdays. It's part of Watson's Bring Your Own Bag Tuesday initiative, which encourages the use of reusable bags instead. All of its 100 stores here will participate, with proceeds set to be donated to an NGO. Now, how do you like your shrimps? Well, Trade and Industry Minister Chan Chun Singh suggests you can have them seared, poached or deep-fried in your favourite samba udang or prawn mee soup. Why are we talking about shrimps? Well, Singapore has, for the first time, begun importing frozen shrimps from Saudi Arabia in a bid to diversify food supply chains. 
and there could be other products from Saudi Arabia in the future, with Singapore possibly importing more items from the Middle East. The shrimps are available now at all NTUC Fair Price outlets. Mark Lee may have missed out at last Saturday's Golden Horse Awards by failing to win Best Leading Actor, but it was a happier ending for homegrown tailor and costume designer Asni Samdin. Winning the award for Best Makeup and Costume Design for his work on Local Film No. 1, the 50-year-old said he only found out he won after a stranger messaged him on social media with the simple words, you won. He shares the accolade with Malaysian stylist Raymond Quack, who did hair and makeup design. More than 35 pieces were designed for the movie, which features song and dance drag queen performances. If you'd like to watch the movie, number one is still screening in theatres here. Need a break from the festive Christmas spirit this December? Why not dabble in spirits of a different kind? Tickets are now available to Asia's first virtual horror mystery escape room. Murder at Mandai Camp, The Case Reopens is the sequel to the highly raved about A Supernatural Murder Mystery, which ran in June, the nation's first interactive Zoom theatre. Joining viewers this time around to solve the mystery is newcomer Benjamin King. Participants will have to interact with evidence such as physical clues that they'll receive in the mail, as well as video footages and flashbacks to identify the culprit. And get this, if you get the culprit right, you have your name thrown into a mystery draw to win a very real non-virtual bounty of $1,000. Fans of 2001 A Space Odyssey might find this somewhat familiar, but most people have been left scratching their heads over this giant metal monolith in a remote part of Utah. Measuring 3 metres in height, it sits among the men, many shallow rock ravines in Red Rock Country and was first spotted last week by a helicopter pilot and wildlife officers. Much speculation has arose as to how such a structure came to be, including suggestions that it could be the work of extraterrestrials. And it seems that Utah's Department of Public Safety have a sense of humour too, reiterating in a statement that it is illegal to install structures or art on federally managed public lands, no matter what planet you're from. Before we go, this might just be my favourite video of the day. Four penguins from the Shadow Aquarium recently went on a field trip to Soldier Field, home of the Chicago Bears and Chicago Fire football teams. And it wasn't their first trip out. According to their keepers, it's important for the birds to experience new sounds, smells and get some exercise. Look at them waddle! Sharing these trips is one way the aquarium stays connected with the public while it's physically closed due to the pandemic. And that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening. Sue Ann is back tomorrow. I'll see you next week.